know that the grass withers and the flower fades, but your word is eternal. I want to demystify a mystery. <laughs> you find that for many years, you have quoted many scriptures that have not come to pass. Has anybody ever wondered why? Why do I quote scriptures and they don't come to pass? Is there a problem with the scriptures? Inga pastor wanoa kota wanajitika. Hallelujah. The reason why people in the kingdom of God quote scriptures that don't come to pass is very simple. They are quoting scriptures that they don't understand. <laughs> they are quoting scriptures they don't fully understand. They are quoting scriptures they don't fully believe. Romans 10. And with the heart, man what? Believes. This way. Then with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. Soteria. This way. So you can confess, but if you don't believe it in your heart or understand it in your heart, it carries no power. That's why you can say, by the stripes of Jesus, I was healed. I was healed and still be sick because you have said a scripture, you have spoken correctly, but understood wrongly. So what you need is understanding. The power, the real power in your walk with God is in your understanding. Understanding. Do you understand the things you are saying? There's no point in calling on the power of the blood of Jesus if you don't understand the mysteries that are in the power of the blood of Jesus, then you won't experience the power. I want you to stop, to, to stop quoting the Bible like it's magic. You have to have an understanding. I mean, it, 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 it sounds so, so simple, but it's really so profound. With the heart, you have to believe. Before you can what? Speak with the mouth. So if you are speaking words with your mouth that are not in your heart, you will be equivalent to the sons of Sceva, Acts 19. Why? They, 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 they did the right thing. They said the right thing, but were saying it from a position of no understanding. They said, in the name of the Jesus whom Paul preaches, which means they didn't have their personal understanding, huh? we command you or we adjure you to come out. Is that what they said? Did the demon come out or not? The demon did not come out because demons know whether you are quoting a scripture you understand or you don't understand. The spiritual world knows if you are speaking with conviction or if you are speaking hoping something might happen. So what causes lack of understanding? Lack of spiritual depth. Lack of spiritual depth means that you don't have a full understanding of what you are doing. We need to move from a place where we are hoping things happen to a place where we are assured that when I quote this scripture, something is going to happen. Because I am fully persuaded that by his stripes I was healed. In fact, I'm shocked that I'm sick. So I'm expelling sickness on the strength of that scripture based on the understanding of the full finished work of Jesus on the cross. I understand what was established. I understand. I understand. I understand what was done. So I'm quoting things from conviction. From a place of conviction. Not from a place of just saying a scripture I read in the Bible that I don't understand. So it is a deep understanding of the things of God that will give me power when I speak the word of God. This is why he says in Joshua 1.8, this book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall what? Meditate in it. What is the purpose of meditation? 
Meditation is to bring understanding. Is to bring understanding. Keep going over the scripture. Keep going over the scripture. Until you understand it. Before you open your Bible and read it. Ask God. God grant me what? Understanding. I need the spirit of understanding. He said in Job 32 verse number 8. I think it is. He says there is a spirit in man. There is a spirit in man. And that spirit gives man understanding. It gives man understanding. Aim to have that spirit that gives you understanding. Job 32 verse 8. Be hungry for understanding. Don't just come to church and get into the service the same. Get out the same. No. You must strive to understand. I want you to get into the habit. Thank you Holy Spirit. For, for in the habit of praying before a church service while you're at home. Even as you are preparing, you are bathing, you are preparing, you are dressing. You are not dressing with your mouth, so your mouth is free. Lord, as I get into church, the word that is spoken by the man of God, let it be relevant to my life. Let me understand. Let me understand. For it is by understanding that I'll be established in 2020 going forward. People never action the things they don't understand. The reason why many people do not participate in tithing, in giving, in receiving, all those kinds of things is because of lack of understanding. There is a benefit in tithing, especially if you tithe from a platform of understanding. <laughs> because now, when I'm tithing, I'm expecting the windows of heaven to open for me. And I'm expecting God to pour out a blessing upon my life. The economy notwithstanding, it doesn't matter what Mtuli Mube and uh, Mangundla are doing. That's none of my business. I will tithe in God's house. God will open the windows of heaven. The hearts of kings are in the hand of the Lord. The Lord will find some kind of way to bless me. And I have that understanding. So when I bring my tithe, it is not a donation. It is a spiritual transaction. And I understand that I'm invoking something in the realm of the spirit because of understanding. Because of understanding. So if you've been giving out of guilt, you need to stop that. You need to give out of understanding that it is a principle that was released by God from eternity for the benefit of mankind. Understand it. No, whatever subject you don't understand, employ more study. Study. Don't just take my word for it. Study on the principle of tithing. Study it for yourself. You must be like, what's the name of that church? The Berean Church. Those guys, they didn't just take the preacher's word. They went and researched after whatever the preacher preached. You've got Google right now. You can Google and a thousand scriptures can just come on your page immediately. Scriptures on tithing. New Testament. And you begin to study. You begin to understand. It's not, it's not so much that I want you to tithe. It's that I want you to benefit from the tithe. Are you getting it? So your understanding it is not only so that you do it, but so that you do it with understanding. By understanding you will be established. Understand the principles of prosperity. There are people who have not accepted deliverance. They believe deliverance is for, I don't know, other people or poor people or whatever they think. Hello? But it's because they have not studied about deliverance. Open the Bible for yourself. Read books of great men of God. Bishop David Oedepo. Such books. And then you, with your Bible by the side, hello, and you study it for yourself. You seek understanding for yourself. Not from a platform of wanting to prove the pastor wrong. No. But from a platform of wanting to understand so that when you do it, power is released. Power is released. Some say power is released. Say it again. Say power is released. So by understanding, I release power. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And understanding is better when it comes direct from God. When it comes direct from God. There are times when God will preach to you one on one. 
Listen to what he said to me. And I, I don't have this in my notes, so I must say it now. He said to me, as I was preparing, he said to me, son, he said, there's nothing that gives you greater understanding than a divine encounter. Oh, because the things that God says to you on a divine encounter, they are, they, they are, uh, 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 let me be a little bit scholastic. They are seared into the card of your conscience. <laughs> they are permanently imprinted into your mind because it is a divine encounter. Because you can easily miss the things I say to you in church, but when it's a one on one with God, those things are imprinted even past your mind straight into your spirit. And you never doubt what God speaks to you on a one on one. On a one on one. I want you to look for personal understanding. Someone say personal understanding. Say I need personal understanding. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Question. As you finished grade 7 in school, you went to form 1, form 2, form 3. Now, form 1 and form 3 were very difficult. Hello? Because you were learning new things. Am I right? Okay. Now, if you fail form 3, you're likely to fail form 4. Unless there's some divine <laughs> Godcraft that happens there. Hello? Okay. Now, in that time, if you'll be honest with everyone here, tell your neighbor I'm about to be honest now. All right, some of you is the first time. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm just playing with you. <laughs> and let's say, let's take Form 3. In Form 3, you learn some new things, maybe a quadratic formula. That's when they introduced that entity. Form 3, somewhere there, right? And when they taught you that quadratic formula, if you didn't understand the formula, did you get the answer correct? In fact, in your working, hello, the marks are in the working. So the teacher is more interested in the working than the You are more interested in the answer. God is more interested in the working. The working shows that you got to understand the principle. Are you listening to me? Now, we have a body of Christ of people who just want the answer. But how did you get there? I don't want a breakthrough without a testimony. And there can be no testimony without a test. Somebody say process. Say process. So the first part of the process is to understand the principle, the concept. When I understand it, the result is inevitable. I will get it right if I understand the workings. What am I saying? I want you to understand the workings of God. How does God heal? How does God bless? How does God prosper? How? How? Step by step. Step by. The steps of a good man are ordered of the Lord. So ask God to help you step by. Somebody say step by step. One of the things that I want us to grasp as we go forward with God is Daniel 11, 32. Okay? He says, those who do wickedly against the covenant, he shall corrupt with flattery. But the people who know their God, they shall be strong and they shall do exploits. Somebody say great exploits. Say great exploits. So great exploits are a function of strength. And strength is a function of knowing God. So you can't be strong without knowing God. That's why when I encounter a man of God in court who says he has power but does not, does not know the scripture, that power is not from God. Your power must come from the knowledge of God. The people who know their God, they shall be strong and they shall do great exploits. How many want to do great exploits? 
All right? Starting businesses is great exploits. Succeeding is great exploits. Building real estate is great exploits. Building hospitals, schools, institutions, those are great exploits. Raising a family for God is great exploits. But it comes from knowing, it comes from knowing, knowing God takes time. It takes an investment of time, study, pursuit. Pursuit, pursuing God. You can't cheat your way to success. You've got to do it properly. If you don't get it on a platform of knowing God, it's temporary. It's temporary and you can't reproduce it. And you can't tell people how you got it. Knowledge of God. Knowledge of God. Deep knowledge of God. Now, let's, say, let's talk about God. You can, you can never fully exhaust knowing God. God is too much for your mind for you to get to know all of God. Because it's the God who was, who is, and is to come. So there is a past dimension of God, present dimension of God's dealing with the church. And then there's a futuristic of the one who is to come. Are you understanding? But be in pursuit of knowledge of God. Pursuit of knowledge of God. Getting to know the God of prosperity. The God who prospers. God is multi-dimensional. He is multi-faceted. So you need to know the different facets of God and understand them. So it's going to require a deep study. A deep study. He says, give attention to doctrine. First Timothy chapter 4, verse 12 to 16. Give attention to doctrine, isn't it? It says, give yourself entirely to these things. I don't want you to be a part-time Christian. I want you to be a full-time committed Christian who gives themselves entirely to these things. The same way you give yourself over to Google. Give yourself over to the word and the things of the word. Give yourself entirely to these things so that your progress may be evident to all. Results that cannot be disputed. <laughs> 2020, I see people under the sound of my voice with results that cannot be disputed by believers, by unbelievers. Why? Purely on understanding the things of God, the different dimensions of God. Whatever facet of God I want to manifest in my life, I must seek to understand that facet of God and it happens by study, study, study to show yourself approved. <laughs> study to show yourself approved. This way, right? So if you study, you'll be approved. No study, no approval. No approval, no manifestations. So you're going to have to go deeper. You can't prosper until you understand the God of prosperity. You can't prosper until you understand the God of prosperity. You can't prosper until you understand the God of prosperity. The God of prosperity comes with principles. He comes with principles. And if you understand the principles, you will work the principles. Being weak, fainting, giving up, caving in, quitting, it's all because you don't know God. And we know God by his word. We know him by divine encounters. We know him by seeking we know him by worship. The deeper I know God, the more results I produce. I want you to refuse to be a Christian who is shallow in the things of God. 2020 going forward, I want you to swim in deep waters. For in deep waters, that's where you find the real fish. Limited knowledge of God. Limited breakthroughs. The kingdom we live in or the kingdom we operate in is a kingdom of mysteries. And it is mysteries that will give you mastery in life. If you understand the mystery 
behind giving and receiving. The mystery behind fast and prayer. The mysteries of the kingdom. The secrets of the kingdom. Jesus came to reveal the mysteries of the kingdom. And if you understand these mysteries, you gain mastery over life. Matthew 16. I in Matthew 16. I want to show you something profound. This will bless your gift. He says, when Jesus came into the region of Caesarea, Philippi, he asked his disciples saying, who do men say that I am? Huh? Who do men say that I, say that I am? The son of man say I am. All right? Give me the next part. They said, some say John the Baptist. Some say Elijah. Others say Jeremiah. Others say one of the prophets. Next verse. But here's the question. He said to them, but who do you say that I am? Listen to this. This will bless you. Carry on. He said, Simon Peter answered and said, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. Did Peter go? Huh? All right. Next verse. Jesus answered and said to him, blessed are you, Simon by Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my father who is in heaven, basically my father has revealed this to you. In other words, you didn't hear this from John. You didn't hear this from people. You gain more understanding when you hear from God. So Peter now, he left the natural, went spiritual, and tapped into another realm in God. And that realm gave him understanding of who Jesus was. Thou art the Christ. Thou art the Christ. The Christos, the anointed one and his anointing. Christ is not Jesus' name. Verse 16. He answered and said what? Verse 16. Simon answered and said, you are the Christ. He didn't say the Jesus. He said you are the Christ. He named him after his calling. Christ means the anointed one and his anointing. So Peter perceived. It was revealed to Peter. Say revelation. Say revelation. Now, revelation is very important. It's important that you get revelation of things from God. That God reveals things to you. Write this down. Revelation will cause a revolution in your life. It is by revelation that you get a what? A revolution in your life. You want things to truly, truly change. They change by revelation. Revelation. So, Jesus says, this was not, you know, flesh and blood has not revealed this to you. This is not a human revelation. It is a divine revelation. Write that down. Divine what? Divine? Say divine revelation. So what you need is a divine revelation. Follow me. I'm going somewhere. He says, flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my father who is in heaven. Next verse. Look at this. And I also say to you that you are Peter. Hello? No more Simon bar Jonah. You are who? Peter, right? And on this rock, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Now it's about to get scholastic. Look at this. He says, on this rock, which, which rock? Huh? You see, it's not the rock of Peter. This is the mistake you've been making all the time. Because Peter means rock. So we assume that no, he was talking about the rock of Peter. No. He says, on the rock of this revelation, I will build my church. Question, what rock are you building on in 2020? So the rock you build on is the rock of revelation. Okay. We said primarily we're talking about understanding. This one. Huh? Through wisdom is a house built and by understanding it is the word understand comes from two words put together. Give me the two words. Under and that means there's something that I am standing on or there's something underneath that I'm standing on. 
on this rock, what, I, what you are standing on, I will build your 2020. On this understanding of this revelation, can God build your 2020? So you need a personal understanding, personal revelation on which God will build on. Listen to this. And when God builds your 2020 on a revelation, the gates of hell or Hades shall not prevail against it. In other words, hell has been prevailing because you've not had understanding. So despite whatever hell does, because you are standing on a revelation, you will not be moved. Because you know what God showed you. You know what God revealed to you. Say revelation. Say revelation. Alright? Now, it gets even better. Give me the next part. And I will give you the keys of the kingdom. So, in other words, keys are given to people with revelation and understanding. Jesus does not give keys because you come to church. Because you can come to church and be locked out of finances. You can come to church and be locked out of healing. You can come to church and be locked out of deliverance. You get keys from Jesus. Follow me. You get keys from Jesus when you have a personal revelation that you understand. After the revelation, he says, I will give you keys to the kingdom. In this kingdom, there is a key of healing. There is a key of deliverance. There is a key of financial breakthrough. There are different keys. Notice he didn't say, I will give you the key to the kingdom. He says, I will give you the keys of the kingdom. So what you do for you to gain mastery over poverty, you get the key of supernatural prosperity. Hello? There are people who are wealthy, but they are sick. So it means that they have the key of the kingdom of wealth, but they don't have the healing key. It's a different key. One key does not fit all in the kingdom. There are different keys, and keys were given after revelation. So if you want a key, get the revelation. Otherwise, you have to break in. Whatever you want from God, there is a key. And the key is released after you understand. And your personal revelation is revealed to you. So Jesus, let's back up a little bit. Jesus only agreed to give Peter the keys after Peter had understanding. He never gave the keys to the other disciples. He gave them to Peter. So keys are not given to a church. They are given to an individual based on personal understanding. That's why you can be in a church where others are buying houses and you are downgrading from a full house to a three-roomed house. Same church, same anointing. What is the difference? Somebody got the keys. Keys are because of revelation. Even prophetically, keys talk of revelation. Not only light, but keys talk of revelation. So Jesus said to Peter, and Peter only. Keys in the kingdom are not shareable, for lack of a better word. It is a personal key, personal revelation. So you notice here, Jesus did not give the keys to all the disciples. He didn't say, because Peter has gotten the keys, those keys are for all of you. No, it doesn't work like that in the kingdom. You need your own personal revelation of prosperity, personal revelation of wisdom, personal revelation of healing. So all the things you want in the kingdom, they are accessible by keys. God will never give you keys to something you don't understand. I want you to know God. I want you to know God. Pursue God. Extract value from all those scriptures and watch your life change. I see your life changing. I said I see your life changing.
I see God elevating you. I see God promoting you. I see God increasing you on every side. In the name of Jesus, by knowledge you will be established. I said by knowledge you will be established. I said by knowledge you will be established. I declare and I decree as you are in God's presence and you have those divine encounters. May you get to know new dimensions of God. And for every dimension of God that you discover, may you get the key to that dimension. When you have a key, it means that thing is now a permanent feature of your life. Thank you, Holy Spirit, I'll say that. The Holy Spirit is saying, you've been satisfied as a church to get a lift from the man of God, but he wants you to have your own keys to your own car. I'm not talking physical car. I'm talking spiritual. So now you can move into dimensions for yourself. Somebody say, I want my own keys. Say, I want my own keys. Because if you only rely on the key of one person, you have to wait for that person's schedule to finally line up with your schedule. No, you must pursue your own keys. Hallelujah. The job of a man of God is the equipping of the saints. The equipping of the saints for the work of the ministry. That means the saints must do the work on, of the ministry. That means they're not gift to the marketplace. They are doing the work of the ministry. Primarily, that money should find its way into the ministry, into the house of God. Because you've been empowered with the purpose. Empowered with the purpose. Empowered with the purpose. And God is going to give any kingdom supporter. If you are a supporter of God's work, I'm telling you, you are receiving keys to, 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 to another dimension of wealth. I prophesy this. It shall come to pass. Even those who are watching me over the internet, I prophesy in the name of Jesus, you are being introduced to another dimension of wealth. Every time that you will physically see the windows of heaven opening. And this time, God will not give you drips, drips and drabs of blessings. He will pour out the blessing upon your life. Before you finish celebrating this breakthrough, there's another three that are on their way. Before you finish closing this deal, there's another five missed calls for, or for other deals that are waiting for you. I'm telling you, everything that you were working on in 2019, in 2020, boom, it will just open up in the name of Jesus because of the key of knowledge. The key of knowledge. Listen to what Jesus says. He says, woe unto you lawyers for you have taken away the key of knowledge. Knowledge is such a powerful key. May you have a personal knowledge of God. May you know him on a different dimension. May God reveal himself unto you in the name of Jesus. May God surprise you with different dimensions of knowledge. Even as you study, you, you get things from the sermon that were not in the sermon. You will get things that were not even in the teaching. There are things that the man of God will share, but there are things that God will give you besides besides what is shared. Hallelujah. Besides what is shared, God will now begin to take you off on a tangent, so to speak, and begin to give you things that are idiosyncratic to you, personal to you, things that are relevant to you, things that are relevant to where you are going, that were not even in the sermon. The sermon is just but a, a small blueprint, but God will give you finer details as you study. Hallelujah. Because when you see the blueprint for your house, you don't see the lights there. I understand me. You don't see that this is where the lights will be. This is, you don't see the bulbs there. Are you understanding me? You don't see the fluorescent lights there. No. Those are now specific things that now are put in there according to the specifications of the owner. May God speak to you according to your own specifications. Yes, the sermon will give you the outline, but by God's grace, you begin to enter dimensions of understanding in the name of Jesus. May you even read your Bible with a prophetic eye. May you listen to sermons with a prophetic ear. As you hear, you will understand. As you will understand, keys will be released. If you get nothing else from me this morning, get this. When you understand something from the Bible, then keys are released. And keys must be a permanent feature of your life. And doors that you open, are, are you understanding me? You enter there and begin to get benefits from the rooms that you enter. I see you entering rooms of different dimensions of wealth. US dollar, pound sterling, euro, deals on an international platform. 
they shall happen, they shall be released in the name of Jesus. When you read the scripture from today, you need to ask the Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, show me the mystery behind this scripture. And when I understand the mystery, I want the key. He says, I'll give you the nation for an inheritance. Hallelujah. So there is a key to international business. I see God releasing that key to certain individuals. In the name of Jesus, may you become extremely wealthy. May you receive the key to extreme wealth. As you study the scriptures, extreme wealth shall be your portion in the name of Jesus. I decree even the key to marriage. There are people, the enemy had locked you out of marriage for a long time. But by the key of marriage, that shall be released as you study on marriage. Hallelujah. May you find the right partner in the name of Jesus. Even there are people who are married but you did not have the key of marriage. That marriage has not been blissful. But as you study on marriage, may God give you the key. The key to a blissful marriage. The key to a successful marriage. There are people who are sick but by the key of knowledge of the scriptures on healing and divine health. I decree divine health will be a permanent feature of your life. Whenever there's sickness in the house, you just take the key. Hallelujah. You apply the key. You are automatically healed. You don't have to wait for the man of God. No. You in yourself are a man of God. The Bible says we are kings and we are priests. May those jewel anointings operate in your life. May you find the keys to those jewel anointings. The king and the priest. The king and the priest. The king and the priest. The king is on the marketplace. But the priest in you is the one who says to your family, it's five o'clock, let's begin to pray. Let's begin to lift up the name of the Lord. And you decree things over your children. Hallelujah. You begin to prophesy things over your children. My pizza, come here. Young Mabiza, come here. You begin to prophesy. Yes, you don't look back. You come, come. You begin to prophesy things to your children. Hallelujah. You begin to say things to your children. Begin to direct their lives spiritually. Because not only are you a king on the marketplace, you are a priest in your home. Hallelujah. And you speak as a man of God. You declare and what you decree shall come to pass. that the grass withers and the flower fades but your word is eternal breaking the chains unlocking your destiny